Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the fourth edition of the online class of chemistry at Islamic College Yoshogo. Once again, I'm your regular host, Abilati Babababa. Like you are aware, we are solving the mock examination questions. Today we are looking at question four. The questions go thus. Define the term allotropy. Allotropy is simply defined as the existence of elements in different forms in the same physical state. Existence of elements in different physical form in the same physical state. The, what is different in allotropes is their physical properties. Their chemical properties remain the same. For A2, name two crystalline allotropes of sulfur. <coughs> the two crystalline allotropes of sulfur are rhombic sulfur and monoclinic sulfur. Rhombic sulfur and monoclinic sulfur. Why the two crystalline allotropes of carbon are diamond and graphite, as you are aware. Many of you got this question right, but you still have something that missed it. Roman 4 and Roman 3, name a method that exhibits allotropy and name its allotropes. Many people missed this question. The method that exhibits exhibit allotropy is tin. If you check your notes under metals and their compounds, you will see it. Tin exhibits allotropy. And the allotropes of tin are gray tin and white tin. Gray tin and white tin. Question 4B. What is the role of molten cryolite in the extraction of aluminum? What molten cryolite does in the extraction of aluminum is that it serves as electrolytic solvent. It is the electrolytic solvent. Explain why the anode has to be replaced after some time during the electrolytic extraction of aluminum. If you remember, the anode in the electrolytic extraction of aluminum is made of carbon. And the product at the anode is oxygen. And we are all aware that oxygen reacts with carbon. That is, carbon bonds in oxygen. So as oxygen is being produced, carbon bonds in oxygen. So the mass of carbon anode gets reduced. Once the electrolysis is not complete, the anode has to be replaced in order to replace the carbon that has burned away by reacting with oxygen like this. So, uh, so that the reaction will continue. So that the electrolysis will continue. So that is why the electrolysis and the anode has to be replaced. For B, Roman figure 2, Roman figure 3, name one oxide that is used in the purification of coal gas and sugar. You will find answer to this question under calcium and its compound. You also find answer to it under sugar. That is amorphous allotropes of carbon. One of the uses of calcium oxide, also called quicklime, is that it is used to purify coal gas and sugar. Therefore, the simple answer to that question is calcium oxide. Remember, the question says name. So you will not write CaO, rather you will write calcium oxide. If you write CaO, you have missed it. Write calcium oxide and put CaO in brackets. 
to show that that is the, the formula. Now, question 4C. The answers I got for this question surprised me most, showing that majority of you could not state Charles' law. As simple as that is, I, I strongly pray that that would not repeat itself. Charles law states that the volume of a fixed mass of gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature provided prior remains constant. <clears throat> Another way of saying that is that Charles law states that the volume of a fixed mass of gas is directly proportional to its temperature in Kelvin provided that prayer is kept constant. But many of you that tried to state the law omitted the word absolute in temperature. Either say absolute temperature or temperature in Kelvin. The majority of you omitted absolute or in Kelvin in your definition. And with that, you could not get your answer. Because the volume is not directly proportional to temperature in any unit. If the temperature is measured in degrees Celsius, the volume is not directly proportional to it. If the temperature is me me measured in Fahrenheit, the temperature and the volume is not directly proportional to it. So the volume will only be directly proportional to it when it is measured in the SI unit, which is the temperature in Kelvin. That is why when you are stating the law, you must state that it should be in Kelvin, or you say absolute temperature. So the majority of you missed this. Please take note of that and avoid such mistake in future. Now, next question. 20 cm cube of sulfur four oxide diffused through a porous partition in five seconds. How long will it take 30 cm cube of methane to pass through the same partition. This question tests your ability to remember Graham's law of diffusion. You remember, Graham's law of diffusion states that the rate of diffusion of gases is inversely proportional to the square root of its vapor density provided temperature and prior remains constant. It means rate of diffusion of gas 1 over rate of diffusion of gas 2 is equal to vapor density of gas 2 over vapor density of gas 1. Remember, if you were given time and same volume of gases, you will use time. And since time and rates are of uh, inversely proportional to each other, you will use T1 over T2 is equal to square root of D1 over square root of D2. So it will be direct proportion. And this type of using the people that you can as well use molar mass. But remember your square roots. But now we are giving different volumes. It means we have to use rates. And how do you, how do you determine the rates? The rates of diversion of each of the gases will be volume over time. The volume of each of the gases over the time taken for the gas to diffuse. And in that case, you have 20 cm cube of sulfur oxide. It means rate of diversion of sulfur oxide is 20 cm cube over time taken for it, five seconds. Rate of sulfur oxide is equal to 20 yeah. cm cube yeah. over five seconds. Mm -hmm. And that gives us four cm cube per second. Rate of dilution of methane is 30 cm cube. over the time taken for it, which we don't know, T. Now, 
Now, applying this formula, we can determine the vapor density of sulfur oxide. Remember, they have, it has to be inverse. So, if we put, since we are putting sulfur oxide on top here, we are going to put it at the, as a denominator here. Yeah. So, let, let the vapor density of sulfur oxide is relative molecular mass, mass of sulfur oxide, which is 32 plus 16 times 2, 1 divided by 2, which gives us 32. And vapor density of methane is going to be 12 plus 1 times 4 divided by 2, which gives us 8. Therefore, rate of dilution of sulfur oxide, which is 4 meta per second scale, 4 centimeter cube per second, all over the rate of dilution of the thing, let's represent that one as R, is equal to square root of vapor density of methane over square root of vapor density of sulfur oxide. Four over R gives us square roots. Now you can, can combine these square roots for your knowledge of arithmetic. Eight over thirty-two. And this tells you that four over R is equal to square root of one over four. This tells us that four over R is equal to square root of uh, square root of one over four is half. And that means R is equal to eight. Remember, R of CH4, which is, is equal to 30 over T. It means 8 is equal to 30 over T. It means 8T is equal to 30. And that means T is equal to 30 divided by 8. Which gives us what? Eight in 30. That is 3.75 seconds. Let's go through the solution. Study it. You will get how we solve it. Question D. In the following reaction, that equilibrium. We could see that we have the reactant here, we have the products here. PCL5 gaseous to form PCL3 gaseous plus chlorine gaseous. State three ways by which the yield of chlorine can be improved in the reaction. Now, there are certain things we have to look, we have to consider in the reaction. The reaction is reversible, so it is, and the, we have, therefore that's why, the reaction is reversible, that's why it's complete equilibrium. So, all the constraints are gases. So, prior, change the prior, may have to bet on it. Three, the number of moles of both sides are not equal. So, definitely, change the prior's effect. So, in terms of prior, if the, the, the number of moles on left hand side is one, number of moles on right hand side is one plus two, and one plus one, that is two. So it means number of moles on the right hand side is more than number of moles on the left hand side. And the one that we are considering is on the right hand side, that is chlorine. We have the number of moles higher. We have established it that when the number of moles is high on one side and a, a decrease in prayer favors such side. Therefore, to get more chlorine, we have to decrease the pressure. So, decrease the pressure. Decreasing the pressure is one way by which we can get the heat of uh, chlorine. So, the simple answer, one of the simple answers there is de by decreasing the pressure. Now, number two is considering the reaction as well. We will see that. 
chlorine is formed at the right hand side. So if we remove chlorine as it is formed, more chlorine will be formed according to Lou Chatala's principle. Remove the chlorine as it is formed, we increase the yield of a chlorine. That is by taking note of a concentration. Now, the third factor that we have, we have been considered is a uh, uh, temperature, but the delta H was not given. If delta H is given, if it is positive, increasing the temperature would improve the yield of chlorine. If it is negative, decreasing the pressure, de de decreasing the temperature would improve the yield of chlorine. But that is not given, so the temperature cannot be an answer. So the third answer that we, we possibly add is by adding more phosphorus 5 chloride, PCL5. So that will also improve the yield of uh, chlorine. So that is the possible answer that we could uh, and add here yeah, to make it three ways. Now, coming to question E, given the reaction, H2O2, that is hydrogen peroxide, liquid, to form H2O, that's water and, ox and oxygen gas. What is the role of manganese 4 oxide in the reaction? You can see that manganese 4 oxide did not actually take part in the reaction here, as given here. So it did not actually take part. Therefore, manganese 4 oxide is acting as a catalyst here. So the role of manganese 4 oxide is what? It serves as a catalyst. That's all. Now, the next question now. Using energy profile diagram only show the effect of manganese oxide on the reaction rate. Now, energy profile diagram. This is the action path. What the action path mean? This is energy. Now, the question has not specified whether we should use endothermic reaction or endothermic reaction. It means we can use either. Now, this is re this reactants. Products. Ordinarily, when the reaction takes, is, is taking place, reactants will be at a certain energy level and the energy, each energy will increase until it reaches the peak, which is called activated complex. Then the, react, the complex will combine together to form the product. This is how reactions, chemical reactions take place. But when a catalyst is used, what a catalyst does is that it lowers the activation energy. This, from, from the other reactive starts to the activator complex here is what we call activation energy. So this is, this is called activation energy. So when the reaction has not been catalyzed, But when a catalyst is added, it's, the activation energy is reduced. So it means the reaction will not reach the initial at the level before it forms the complex. So this, the activation energy will not be this. For catalyzed process, and this is the this is what the catalyst does. It lowers the activation energy. So the, the examiner wants you to use energy profile diagram only like this. So you have to show it like this, and then show the label each of the parts to score the mark. So this takes us to the end of question two, as appeared in your.
mock examination. And that is where we are going to stop for today. Inshallah, we are going to continue from here next class, where we are, we are going to look at uh, question five. So we have come to the end of solution to question four. Question five is next. So do have a nice time. Make sure you do your assignments and submit back into your portal. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.